Howdy folks, Chuck Sheely here with Making Music Magazine for another Artist Spotlight. And today we're here with Mr. A to Z, Jason Mraz, all the way from Southern California. Hi Jason, how you doing man? I'm good, how are you Chuck? Doing very well, thank you. Right on. Um, so you've been, aside from being busy, uh, no matter what with your music, you're also busy doing nice things for the world. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your, uh, your Shine program? Wow, thanks. Well... It's easy to do nice things for the world when the world has been so nice to me. Uh, you know, I came into this world just wanting to sing songs and make stuff up, and I was given that opportunity again and again and again as a young person coming up through music education programs. We had great music in public schools. We had summer programs. We had community theater. We had competitions, and there was just always opportunity. And as I got older, I saw that really those opportunities are only made possible because patrons of music, uh, people who believe in music education, people who believe in arts education, uh, make programs like this happen or they donate to programs to keep them happening. So I became a donor to the, pro to the programs that I came up through. And the more I became a donor, the more you really start to uh, just enjoy the experience of watching these programs thrive or watching even programs be born out of an idea that a teacher has. So I just became very involved in that, continued to make donations and continue to lend my time to the stages of uh, where young people are performing and sort of getting their chops and having new experiences. So much so that I created my own foundation then that I could do my own fundraising for and help create and uh, shine for inclusive arts education and the advancement of equality and basically use music education programming to help otherwise underserved communities, give them opportunities because I know firsthand what it was like to have an opportunity to have a great music education or a great collaborative experience as a kid. So the Shine program was our first program that we did here in San Diego. I'm originally from Richmond, Virginia, and I've been doing this work for eight or nine years previously in Virginia, and I was really hoping to start bringing it to San Diego, which has been my new home in music. And we uh, we found seven different organizations here in San Diego who all basically were in alignment with our mission and we gave them a grant to continue their work and at the same time we gave them an invitation and essentially a challenge. The invitation was to be a part of our show. The challenge is use one of my songs and create a live act of art with it, whether you're going to dance or if you're a music group, maybe you, you'll play the song, you'll be the accompaniment for this song. Um, so we had dancers, we had um, singers, we had musicians, all young people uh, from like eight, eight to 18. Uh, we had a little over 100 kids on stage and we created a narrative of a day in the life of San Diego and we used my song catalog but the, the youth really were the ones that created the show. Um, and we did it for two nights at uh, uh, Breckles Theater in downtown San Diego, and it was a big hit. And it was even a hit at the box office, which then allowed us to share the box office with those organizations again. So they not only got a grant, they also got the reward of what it's like to put your show on to a public audience. Um, and the whole thing took about three and a half months for the students to gather each week and learn the songs and learn the dances and and uh, build the sets and basically just give this young people an opportunity. Here's an opportunity to put on a show and we're going to do this thing. Um, and at the same time, put a little uh, money into those organizations. So cool. it's a fun way to both donate and collaborate. You know what I'm saying? So Shine was our first one. Uh, that was in 2020. We did that in February, and we were hoping to do it again, but things have obviously gone virtual. We haven't been able to meet with young people in classrooms. Yeah. So uh, this year, instead of kind of going into classrooms, we've wanted to continue our outreach and find programs not just in San Diego, but all across the nation. So we've, we've put a um, call to action out there that says, do you have a nonprofit that is in alignment with our mission, the advancement of equality and inclusive arts education. And you could use an uplift, a grant. Um, we're giving out 25 $2,000 grants 
Um, all you have to do is really apply and be in alignment with our mission. And that's already helped us find a hundred organizations in the U.S. And, and help figure out where people are because that's what we also want to serve. We want to make sure we're reaching into the underserved community where people need the visibility and they need the dollars. So by any chance, do you know Francisco Nunez of uh, the Young People's Choir of New York City? I love Francisco Nunez. And I do too. YPC. We just met him last week and uh, what a terrific gentleman he is. Yeah. You know? And we made friends right off the bat. What he's yeah. doing is amazing. We're going to have a story of him coming up parallel to this. He's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. he's the real deal. He came up, uh, you know, in the streets of New York, you know, seeing where opportunities were needed for young kids to not only excel in music, but excel in education, excel in their whole lives by giving them extraordinary music programming in New York City. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know Francisco, and I've actually had the pleasure of performing with, with him and his, his fantastic choirs. Wow, that's yeah. cool. That's yeah, really cool. cool. It's a nice thing. Uh, yeah, actually, now that I think of it, I think they're up right now. So you can see our, our uh, spotlight with him. Which awesome. Is, this is going to be, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I love choir music and, and the Young People's Choir of New York is, they're up there. They're one of the best. So, um, you know, for the benefit of our, our readers, uh, our viewers and so on, um, they like to learn from pros like you. Can you can you tell us a little bit about like how you got started in music from an educational standpoint? Sure. I think a fun thing to remember if you're just starting out is um, even the pros, if I were to call myself a pro, I still don't know what I'm doing. Uh, but that's the beauty of art and creativity is, is you want to lean into a new thing every time you sit down to interact with the divine, interact with your instrument, interact with your voice, whether it's drums, piano, guitar, or just your own body instrument. Uh, you, for me, I always want to feel something new. So that's why I love writing songs, because what can I write next? What can I write next? What can I sing next? What style haven't I tried yet? And so it's constant discovery, constant exploration. And in that, there's no place to get. Um, when you become professional, it's only because you've had enough experiences that now you have this tool belt of uh, access to art. Um, I call it language. There you go. You have, a, you have a much bigger language, a much bigger vocabulary to speak the language of music, be it with other musicians or just you and your instrument. Um, but I don't think that that discovery ever goes away. Therefore, there's no place to get. It's the process. It's the journey of constant discovery. And it's the, it's the journey of getting your brain to do one thing with one hand and another thing with the other or uh, in all every single day just to get a glimpse of, of new or progress. Um, I don't like to use the word progress because I think historically we've used that for like how much you can get done in a day, but it's not that. It's just... Discovery? Yeah, I guess it's discovery, but... Um, you know, I, I don't like playing my old songs over and over and over again because that's just really a recital. If I do play my old songs over and over again, how can I reinvent them every day? How can I lean into this and maybe write a new verse on the fly or change the meaning of the song or create a new melody for the song? So constant exploration and constant improvisation. To me, that's what keeps me excited to come back. It keeps me excited to still be learning. Um, I don't ever feel like a professional. I only have had enough experiences now, and I only now have enough contacts that I can get gigs and uh, stay busy. So I think that's the only thing that makes me professional, but my, my attitude still feels very green, very new, very humble, very much... Uh, you know, the page is blank. The next song I'm going to write has not been written yet, and it's, it can either be um, daunting and scare me away, or it can look like an opportunity, like, wow, I have no idea what's going to happen. This is going to be really exciting. 
So did that answer your question? Yeah, it does. What we're talking about anymore. Yeah, well, ice cream. We were talking about the I love uh, ice cream. auspices of ice cream. Um, so as far as like your guitar influences, like I think of you as like uh, you got a little Brazilian influence or yeah. jazz chords in a pop way with a little, you yes. know, where, where does that come from? Richmond? <laughs> Interestingly, Richmond has a, a, a awesome Cuban scene. So yeah. Yeah. grew up listening to not a lot, but it was part of the listening scene in Richmond. We also had our jam bands, our various jazz fusion bands, Virginia Commonwealth University, great music school, um, close to Charlottesville, Virginia also, where you've got Dave Matthews doing his thing. Um, so there was a little bit of that singer-songwriter meets jazz fusion, or we had Bruce Hornsby in our area, you know, like you've got this smooth jam thing happening at the same time that songwriting is happening, you know. Uh, so that was an influence. And then I honestly think the biggest influence in my music were uh, probably two people. Um, Raul Midon, who is a fantastic on the jazz side, pop jazz, again, jazz fusion, I guess, uh, singer songwriter, percussive guitar player. Beautiful voicings on the guitar. Uh, we shared a summer together on a bus touring, and he had nylon, uh, he had fingernails, uh, acrylic nails kind of glued to his fingers, mm -hmm. and he was playing the nylon string guitar, and I fell in love with that. And after that tour, I went and got the acrylic nails and wore those for, I, this is the first year I ever kind of grew them out and got rid of them. Um, but I switched to nylon string after that summer, 2004, and started listening differently. Um, people also used to say I sounded like Kenny Rankin or, or Michael Franks. And mm -hmm. I love Michael Franks. Mm -hmm. uh, so I hadn't even heard of those guys until people said I kind of emulated them. So then I started listening to them and then I obviously wanted to emulate them even more. So Franks is the those. cookie jar is empty guy, right? What's that? He's the yeah, the cookie, the jar, cookie jar is empty. Jar is empty. Yeah. That is yeah. baby. When the cookie jar is empty. Yeah, I can uh, see that. I love Michael Franks. Hi, yeah. Michael. If you're watching this, thanks for continuing to create amazing tunes. Right here, ladies and gentlemen, this is the part of the show where we ask Mr. Mraz to give us the two-minute tip. The, the two-minute two minute tip, tip that saves you time as a learning songwriter, guitarist. Go. Cool. Um, my favorite way to write a song is to close my eyes and sing. Just start basically throwing darts with your voice. And if you don't have words, scat your way into a melody. Just sing because you have to warm the body up and you have to make a noise. And you don't necessarily want to whisper it and you don't want to just keep it in your head. It really does help to hear the potential of the song, to hear the potential of the volume, of the dynamics, of the tones, of the shapes and see how they resonate truly with your, with your feelings and your emotions of the day. If you wanna prompt to help you get started writing, set a two minute timer and write yourself a bad poem. Just write a bad poem, because every song starts as a bad poem that then you, once you start singing it, then you can tweak it, you can change it, you can discover that, oh, inside this bad poem is actually beauty. So don't think about writing anything brilliant just start thinking about making noise and getting some words on the page just start thank you very much just start yeah well, folks, i appreciate being here jason and uh, i hope everything goes well for you and you guys get back out there and start playing soon and um, your organizations uh, continue to do well and to do good in the world Thanks, so uh um, tell the folks where they can see it. it's jasonmraz.com, correct? jasonmraz.com has all the information. I'm also on the Instagram, the Facebook, the Twitter, and more recently, TikTok, jason underscore mraz. And my favorite thing about that is I've been going on about midnight and doing a live set, kind of unannounced, and it's a blast because it's a small group 
and I can ask people to use the comments to tell me, you know, their names, where they are, what city, maybe even the environment. Are they watching in bed, on the couch, in a car? And it helps paint a picture for who I'm performing to. And then I also ask for song prompts or give me a key, and we make up songs on the fly. So for me, it's a practice of, well, performing and also improvisation. So I've been doing that on the TikTok, but it, it's unannounced, and it's usually late in the middle of the night. Uh, but it's a ton of fun. Uh, cool. We will be performing in April, uh, doing drive-ins in Southern California. So that's going to feel nice. New. But yeah, JasonRaz.com has all that information. Right on. Okay, folks. Well, if you had a great time today, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, go to all our social media. We're everywhere all the time. Join our mailing list, etc. Keep practicing, keep playing music, and have a great day. Peace. Peace. Thank you.